got another red tail tutorial for you today this one is all about getting started with red tail as you see here we're at redtailtechnology.com we want to log in so I'm gonna go ahead and hover over login and click red tail CRM now as a best practice it's good to go ahead and save this page bookmark it save it on your desktop whatever you want to do that way you don't have to always go to redtailtechnology.com and click on login you can make it your home page if you want as well we're gonna go ahead and sign in and that's going to take us directly into our CRM. Now, the first thing I want to point out inside of our CRM is our navigation. We got two key areas for you to remember when it comes to navigation. The first is over on the left hand side. This left navigation menu essentially takes you to the main areas of the CRM. This is where you can quickly access your calendar, contacts, reports opportunities, seminars. We also have a social media feed and of course our workflows. These are all just sort of the main sections that we can click to and from within Redtail. The other section is up in the top right hand corner. These are our top right icons. These are really cool. All right, They help you quickly access certain functions within Redtail. Let's go through them one by one here. The first one is the plus sign. That's our quick add icon. Anytime we want to add something into the database, we can use that bad boy right there. Activities, contacts, documents. We can add notes right from here. We can add seminars, opportunities, and workflows. It doesn't matter where we are in the CRM. doesn't matter when, where, why, or how. We can click on that quick add icon and throw whatever we want into our database. Really cool and really helpful. Just next to that is our integrations icon right here. And this is going to show us what integrations we have available to us, what integrations are turned on, and what they can do from the page that we're on right now. Now, because we're on the Today's Overview page, we don't have a lot of options here. I can go ahead and click on All Bridge here, and that offers a single sign-on. It also offers us the ability to go straight to their site. We can take a step back and we can go do any one of the other integration partners that we have to learn more about what they do and what they provide and how their service ties into Redtail. We'll talk about those in a little while. The next icon is the recently viewed icon, the little man right here. And that little man, by clicking on it, brings up your last 15 or so viewed contacts inside of Redtail. Obviously, we're only seeing four right here, but it takes account into the last contacts you've seen. It's also the best place to access your quick lists and your tag groups. Now when you're getting started with Redtail, and that's what this webinar is about, getting started, you're not going to have any in here initially. We also have our alerts icon. This alerts icon is going to show up and it's going to actually turn red and going to have a number next to it when we have any alerts available. We can actually click on it right now and it lets us know, hey, we're all caught up. We can go ahead and dismiss all. We can complete activities from this page. This is where we get our notifications. And then right next to that, last but certainly not least, is our help and resources icon. This is where we have all of our help materials. We're going to cover this in detail at the end of this tutorial. Now, one of the first things you're going to do as you're getting started with Redtail is you're going to want to go in and you're going to want to manage database users and teams. We want to add more users to our database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my name and you can do the same at home or in your office, wherever you're at, and we're going to go down to manage your account. Now as I scroll down here, you'll see that we have a section that's called admins only. All right, This is only for the database owner, which is essentially the overlord of the CRM. They can go ahead and do anything they want in the CRM or users marked as admin. So we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to show you what we mean here. We're going to go down and click on Manage Database Users and Teams. Now we start with only one, all right, the database owner, the person that signed up for the trial, all right. Now we can go ahead and we can add new users right here by clicking Add and choosing New User. We're going to go ahead and we're going to fill out this information. We'll put in a username, password, password confirmation, an email address, first, middle, and last names, and then we have the admin checkbox. Now checking that admin checkbox gives this user the ability to access that admins only section where we can manage database lists, manage users and teams, and so on and so forth. It's important to note that the username is concrete. It cannot be changed, it cannot be edited. Once a username is picked, it's in there, it's locked in. If a username has been picked before, 
then it can't be used again either. So maybe Bobby RT has been taken. We can go ahead and throw in another RT just to make sure. Um, but just remember that if somebody somewhere has taken that username inside of Redtail, then it can't be used again. We can go ahead and scroll down and click add new user. Now this new user can always go in and modify that password when they log in for the first time. And as you see, we now have our new user. They're an active user. They haven't logged in yet, and so that gives us that, uh, that funky 1900 state right there. But just next to that new user, we have our action button. And our action button allows us to go back and work with this user and edit certain things about them. We can edit user info, which has to do with editing their name, their email address, or whether or not they are an admin. So let's go ahead and let's check this box for Bobby here. We'll go ahead and update that user. And by adding that admin option and checking that box we see right there, Next to uh, his active icon, he now has an admin icon, letting us know that he does have admin rights. We also have the ability to edit user rights. Now, the admin rights allow this particular user to access some of the behind the scenes type stuff. The managing of users and teams is a great example. The user rights, however, uh, allow you to pick how this particular user is interacting with the data in your database. So as we see here, we have several check boxes that we can either check or uncheck. By checking these boxes, we are giving the user the right to do these things. So now Bobby has access to do everything. He can access reports. He can change servicing and writing advisors. He can combine records, delete notes and contacts, or export data. If we do not want our user to do this, let's go ahead and let's just uncheck everything. We're going to take all the rights away from him, and we'll go ahead and we'll update those user rights. Clicking on that action button again, we can go and we can change the password. We have to remember the new password and we have to obviously put in our current password. We got to make sure that there's no funny business going on, but we can go ahead and do that for them. We can also unlock the account. How many times have you logged in? <laughs> Too many times, the wrong login, and now you're locked out. If you log in three times unsuccessfully, then it's going to lock you out for about 15 minutes. Not the end of the world, but an admin or the database owner can go back in and unlock your account. Now, if you're the only user, you can go ahead and give our support team a call and we'll go ahead and we'll make sure that we unlock you. And then of course, the last option we have here is to disable the user, All right? Now, disabling the user is essentially deleting the user from existence. We're not deleting them from the CRM. You have to remember one of the names of the game, so to speak, when it comes to CRM is history. And in our you know, usage of the CRM, or I should say in Bobby's usage of the CRM, he may have added notes, he may have added activities and done all kinds of stuff in our CRM that we want to keep. We want to keep that history there. So by disabling the user, we'll go ahead and mark him as disabled here. That's going to go ahead and take him off his list. It's going to prevent him from logging in again, but he is still active in our CRM as a disabled user. He's still there. Don't worry. The admin rights, none of that matter. But now he cannot log in. He has no access. He's done. He's gone. He basically cannot do anything from this point forward. All right. So if you ever want to delete a user, that's how you do it. You can go ahead and disable him. So let's go ahead and let's add one more user here. And I'll just blow through this really quickly. And we'll go ahead and add our second user. So now we got Rick and we got Sally in here. So now once we have our users, we can actually create teams as well. We can go up to the top and click on teams. We can have as many teams as we want, all right? And we can have as many people in the team as we want. And we can have as many teams that have a single person on them, okay? Teams are useful for several reasons. They're useful for permissioning, where we can permission off single contacts or groups of contacts to a specific team or set of people. They're useful for notifications, for notes and activities. They're also useful for workflow and automation assignments. Let's go ahead and let's add a team here. We'll click up in the top right, add team. Pretty simple. We're just going to give it a name. Let's go ahead and let's just call it Team Amazing. And now we can add our team. Now our team's been added. Same thing. We can go ahead and we can go in and edit using that action button. We can delete it. Or we can click on the name of our team and go in and add our team members. So let's add the only two people on our database right now. We can select from our drop down. We can select Rick. And let's go ahead and let's add Sally as well. So 
So now we have our users created, we have our teams created, we can actually go in and now assign activities to teams, we can assign notifications, we can assign workflow assignments, and we can also have automation assignments all based on database users and teams. Well, that about wraps it up for this tutorial. Definitely check out more. There's more in the Getting Started series as well. But uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.